So here we are. Got the Footman James coffee and chrome. That's Chateau Impney. Uh, I've heard so much about this meat. It's a brilliant turnout, so hopefully we're going to see some great cars. Ever get that feeling of deja vu? I've literally just arrived back from France. Now here I am in the Midlands of England, driving up the driveway of a French chateau. Surreal. Chateau Impney is a unique house with a chequered history. Over the years at the hands of various wealthy owners, it's been a private home, a hotel, and an exhibition center. Requisitioned as a training center during World War II, it went on to host the legendary hill climb speed trials and even housed the Midlands' first disco in its basement in the 1960s. Now it's the home of Footman James Coffee and Chrome Classic Car Meet. It was built in the 19th century in the style of a French chateau by a local industrialist for his wife to satisfy her nostalgia for Paris, the city in which he'd been raised. The marriage wasn't a success, by the way. She moved out soon after. See, he's done this before. <laughs> well, not very often because I haven't long had a new hood fitted. Yeah, they're a bit stiff in the new as well, aren't they? This, this, I've had a while. Yeah. I hadn't got a hood for ages and ages. Yeah. And, um... So how long have you had this? <laughs> oh, we'll have to be telling your age. No, <laughs> I've had it over 30 years. Wow. I bought it in bits. Yeah. It's and, done a lovely job. And that's a retirement project. Yeah. And after 21 years of owning it in bits, yeah. I thought I'd better start doing this. Well, you've done it and you've... You've done it proud, it's uh, fabulous. Yeah. Did you paint it yourself? Oh no, I had someone on So you're putting all your pension money into it? And this is it now, this is your pension? Well, yes, I suppose, but uh, I don't, I shan't sell it. I, uh, it's, it's, I just enjoy the thrill of driving it, really. Yeah. What is it, TC? No, TF. TF? Oh, yeah. It's a different front. What a lovely old guy. And this car's an absolute credit to him. And then I'm introduced to a guy called Craig Blake Jones, who's just opened a speed shop to encourage young people into working on classic cars. So, nice to meet you, Craig. Morning. Yeah. Uh, so, tell me about this fabulous magazine, well, by the way. Thank you tell very me much. About the, you know, what you're setting out to yeah. do and well, what you're all about. We started Paddock Life. I'm a born petrol head, yeah, right? And I've always been in film, television, music, entertainment, but I've always been a petrol head. So, back what, in, in what capacity? Uh, I was a film producer. Uh, I worked Stacey for a big you? film companies. Which one? Um, I worked for Winchester Films for many years. Yeah. Before that, I was in music. I used to tour, manage bands, manage artists, yeah. things like that. So, and then, but I've always been, my passion was cars. That's the same as uh, me. Isn't yeah. it? It's a great foundation, isn't it? Especially if you're, you know, you're yeah. thinking of making a program, whatever, you've kind of got a little in and you, you understand how it all works. Yeah. So. I was lucky enough to own some very, very nice cars back a few yeah. years ago. Um, and I was always a, at things like Formula One, and I was always thinking, well, you know, motorsport is 95% standing around, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, five percent action. Like that, and, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. So I thought, let's start a magazine yeah. for, you know, basically, this is the ultimate passion project, a magazine yeah. for me and my mates that we'd want to read when we're at it. So we started this, uh, issue one was, we launched at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2014. We're now on issue 20, it's a quarterly, sort of the lifestyle around motorsport and high-end cars beautiful photography so it's just like porn yeah it's cars. complete car porn it's what i wanted to, it's just everything i wanted to do that makes no commercial sense whatsoever yeah. but it's good that, <laughs> yeah. i like what you said yeah. about you want to make the magazine that you yeah. want to read it's a piece really. of art yeah. yeah i mean you know i've just started a little youtube channel mm. off yeah and I want to try and make a program that I would like to watch. Exactly. Appeal to people yeah. like myself or the normal home yeah. mechanic, and just keep it simple, you know, yeah. and, and keep it real. My oldest son Ethan. So, he goes, what are we going to do, Dad? 
And I said, what do you want to do? And we'd always got a little classic car project on the go in the garage. Yeah. So we'd always talked about me and my two boys having a little speed shop and, you know, yeah. as a hobby. And is that what you've so, done with your so, like so we've shop? turned so we've opened the paddock speed shop in yeah. the black country where we live and we were thinking as proper petrol heads that that you know like getting our hands dirty under it bonnets and things we thought let's do a show but ethan was saying but there's nothing for my generation nothing for young people do you think that they do. don't appreciate the older cars uh, I, I think, mean, I try, I try to get my girls yeah. into Marvin Gaye and so on, all yeah. the rest of it. And listen, they're all into it, you know, yeah. they've basically spoon-fed them yeah. as they were growing well, up. Well, likewise, Ethan grew up with it. So he, cars was, the same. Yeah. he passed his test in an MGB GT, uh -huh. but he wanted to be able to use it as a daily yeah. and drive it. So he wanted it to drive more like it, a modern car. To it yeah. Don't right, you so. think it's really important, though, Craig, especially for, for young people today, to understand just the basic rudiments of the car? Absolutely. Not, not so they won't get ripped off, but yeah. if you break down the side of the road, at least they can change a wheel. Totally. How many times you pass a yeah. car and there's a couple of kids standing by it going, or even, you know, people of our generation yeah. waiting for the AA they, to come yeah, or the, the RAC? It. You know, you're probably the same as me. If you wanted to drive it, you had to be able to fix it on Saturday I to get to girls, work on right, Monday. Every now and then I'll yeah. go, right. You've got to change the wheel now. Yeah. So I know if they're stranded somewhere, middle of the night, whatever, you can change the wheel and get on the way again. Well, that's that's what I've got. Both my lads have always done that. The one's an apprentice working on race cars. Yeah. Uh, the younger one, Ethan, you know, is doing that. But I mean, Ethan was working on Ferraris with me at home because I, you know, even when I was lucky enough to have cars like that, I'd still, <laughs> I'd still change all the brake pads and do whatever I could myself. Yeah. Because why pay someone else to do yeah. something you can well, do? It's all about safety as well, yeah. isn't it? Well, and I know if I've done it, it's right. Yeah. And no, but it's a yeah. You know, when you're yeah. teaching your kids, yeah. it's a dangerous, Definitely. dangerous yeah. job to be in. So, it, really? so he's gr grown up around it, but he felt just yeah. like that, that there's a lack of young people. The skills in that industry yeah. are retiring, yeah. and we need a next generation oh, yeah. to I mean, come into we it. We missed a generation with all so, that. Yeah. The engineers have all kind of gone Exactly, you know. and that's why we've had... So when we came up with the idea of the Paddock Speed Shop, yeah. which was doing just that, we've had so much help from the industry. So tell me, Craig, when is this going to be on this boat? Um, we're airing in the new year, and it's 10 one-hour episodes. Come down the shop and talk to them while they're actually working. I'd, I'd, I'd love like that. To do that. Yeah. You know, I really admire that Craig's using his resources to share his passion and get more young people involved in classic cars. But I don't want people to be put off and think that this is just a rich man's passion. Even if you don't have the facilities or the finances, just coming down to meets like this allows you to become part of the classic car community. Looking around me here today, it's so nice to see such an eclectic mix of cars from all countries and all ages. I mean, look at this old American relic. Although these trucks are bulletproof, you can see there's a lot of care and attention being lavished on keeping this one alive. Now I'm gonna find out more about what it means to put a show like this together. So David, nice Pleasure to meet you, Gary. Nice yeah. to meet my sponsors, one of them. <laughs> uh, so you're the MD? I am. Footman James. Yeah, MD Footman James for nice. my sins. I have to say, this is, this is an amazing It's show. a lovely day, isn't it? Uh, up our end, there's like Tatton Park and places like that, yeah. which is a, a proper big classic car show. Yeah. But I think your turnout, I mean, there must be 800 cars here. Yes, it's slightly more than we anticipated, but when the sun's out, people want to just get out in their vehicles. Well, I've noticed it was more than you anticipated because the bacon buses have run out. <laughs> I was so looking forward to that bacon butty and a coffee. And look at it. I'm not coming I, here again. No, no I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> so tell me a bit about what you do and, and how you organise this show and how you're able to police such a huge well, amount of cars and people. Well, we're, you know, we're a classic um, vehicle insurance broker. Um, so predominantly classic bikes, classic cars, specialist vehicles, private clients, high net worth as well. And uh, we're part of a bigger community. So we... we we, we serve kind of, uh, I think it was about a million and a half classic vehicles overall. Yeah. Um, how do we best keep those on the road? So things like these events 
a good way of getting our community together. Absolutely, and I, I noticed, and this is what I like about Footman James. I've been with Footman James for years, and I'm, I'm glad you sponsor me because I think the things you, you aim to do, like you, you're trying to introduce more young people, aren't you? It's a classic. Absolutely, cars. yeah. And I think it's a great thing because it's, it's almost like a missed generation. We were talking about this before. Yeah, we, we our industry is full of. Um, 50 plus blokes uh, generally and we need to get younger we need to get you know more diversity more inclusion yeah. um, younger members uh, the, the, the skill set is is disappearing people are dying off we need to keep these vehicles on the road and we need younger people more and more involved and so something like this if you look at the vehicles it's such an eclectic yeah, mix I was saying so you know well. young it, we, we don't mind it, it, it's it, it's their passion at the end mm. of the day so the, the variety of vehicles is the important thing. You know what I like about it as well, David? There's something a little bit snobby about clubs when they stick together and they all put the cars on the same yeah. the same lot, whatever, and this is the Jaguar, this is the Mercedes, this is the it's like, you know, just have it mixed. The, know, we're the, all the same, aren't we? The wonderful thing is you'll see a lot of these cars parked out on the grass and there's yeah. there's the Austin Allegro and it's next to yeah. a, a Porsche, doesn't yeah. matter. It's their, it's their passion and that's, and that's what it's all about yeah. yeah and as long as we can keep that passion going and we need to work harder we need to look at the environmental issues we need to look at sustainability Sorry. we need to look at as Fresh i said side, <laughs> we need to look at the diversity as much as possible. We'll get, get more younger people involved um they're more interested in the 80s 90s vehicles than than you know perhaps some of our generations that prefer some of the older vehicles so what 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 was their the cars when they were younger, on the posters and so on? You know, different. They they it's change over that, time. It's changed, though, isn't it, David? When I was like growing up in the sixties and seventies, when I was a teenager, I look back to nineteen sixties cars. Yeah, and was, oh, absolutely. God, what a classic. Yeah. And then you get to the nineties and, and the two thousand, you think cars of the eighties, and then now it's the nineties, and you think about you sort of move up and cars that not a classic then is now a classic in your mind. It's amazing. So I, I, I learned in a, like I learned in a metro, and I always kind of looked at the Peugeot two hundred and five GTIs and thinking, and now the they're, one of they're, they're, they're you know people kind of aspire to sort of going back to that. It's the nostalgia bit. It's the family bit. I remember playing as George Michael cassette. <laughs> the album had just come out, and only had a Peugeot two hundred and five GTI. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this industry. It's, 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 it's a lot of it's about nostalgia yeah. and, and family and links and, and community. A of our childhood, what we grew yeah. up with. And Absolutely. It makes us feel comfy, doesn't it? It, it? It's kind of simpler times almost. Yeah. Whatever those times were, it always feels simpler. So just getting people out today is just wonderful. The sun's shining. There's a lot of challenges, a lot of pressures on people at the moment. Fuel prices going up. You know, so there's a lot of demand on, and just couple of hours out in the sunshine is um well, i'm having is a ruby sign david apart from the lack of coffee and bacon butties by the way lovely to meet you great to meet you everything. thank you for that so joking apart guys classic car clubs can sometimes seem intimidating for some people but for anyone deciding to embark on maintaining or restoring their family classic joining the relevant car club is a first port of call clubs are a must for what can sometimes be a lonely occupation for any individual they will welcome you in, providing a hub of rare and unobtainable parts, as well as sharing their invaluable knowledge and support. The thing I've learned most about today is it doesn't matter if you're in a million pound Ferrari or a rundown Morris Minor, it's the application and the shared passion that shines through. It's universally infectious and actually brings people together from all walks of life and all ages. Thank you for watching this episode of Gary Mavin's Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and join me next time as I do a full service on the engine and gearbox on the Rolls Royce Corniche, sort out those oil leaks and carry out some serious overdue maintenance.